Welcome back to the VK PetCast. I'm Bryce. I'm Kenzie. And we created this podcast to help you enrich and extend the lives of your dogs and cats at home. And today we're joined by Melissa Bologna. She's a former actress and CEO, as well as founder of Beauty and the Broth, which is a shelf-stable bone broth concentrate company she founded from poor digestive issues that she experienced earlier in her life. Now she is also the CEO of Primalvore, a pet bone broth company as well. Welcome to the podcast, Melissa. So Melissa, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, I really want to know how you got into the the pet bone broth world, but take me a little bit back to before that and kind of what you were doing that ended up leading to where you are now. Sure. So it's two parts. I started with my own personal bone broth company, Beauty and the Broth, and I got into that from chronic digestive issues that literally impaired me from going to school. And I finally learned it was digestive issues. I moved to Los Angeles, pursued a career in acting. And then it was then and there where I started to realize health wasn't just looking skinny. It was so much more. My sister got me to try bone broth, became massively passionate about it. It fixed my digestive issues, hair, skin, nails, my knee from sports. Um, So what led me on the path to dogs? Well, you want the best for your dogs. And obviously this was the best for me, but something that happened that was really, really eye-opening for me was my sweet little dog Paco, who's just taking a little nap over there. Um, He was actually in the ICU for six days as an adult dog. He was about nine years old with an interception, which is pretty much when your intestine folds in on itself. And the doctors kept trying to get me to put him down. They're like, only puppies get interceptions. And I was like, I need to see this through that. That's insane. They kept trying to tell me he had cancer. Sure enough, he gets the surgery, no cancer. The vets couldn't tell me what was wrong with him. I contacted the food company he was on. They ran his whole history since he was a puppy and found out he had really, really bad allergies. So if sweet little Paco was having bone broth during this time, it could have lined his gut and, uh, and helped him um not have this interception so that also led me down this road for dog bone broth that they should have the same benefits that bone broth gives to us humans yeah makes total sense so like i I mean it's not just that you saw a gap in the market or anything it's that you went through this process i mean basically twice you went through it once with your own personal life of realizing all the different benefits that bone broth has to offer for humans and then went through a similar thing with your dog and found out it's great for dogs too i'm going to add a third one when i found out last summer i had really bad mold toxicity that led to the autoimmune disease hypothyroid the largest part of my third party protocol was bone broth oh my gosh all roads lead back to this <laughs> I can't get away from this stuff <laughs> that's hilarious and and we definitely don't consume it as much as we should in our own life but we've definitely started incorporating it in our animals lives and mm-hmm. you know it's hard to see i always tell people when you get to the point where you're feeding like the highest quality food possible improvements you make then are kind of incremental you don't see as many benefits as going from like kibble to then a whole new lifestyle but our dogs absolutely love it we've even been using the ones you sent us so far too the duck one especially yes. so they yeah, love it duck is the best seller at primal board the dog oh just- really they eat it up, literally. That's surprising. I, I think would think it'd be like beef. Yeah, I think it's really, well, I don't know because, <clears throat> excuse me, I know like chicken is such a common allergy. So the fact of doing duck, but I think beef is like getting oh, it's up, up there like, too. right there with chicken. 100%. So the fact that it's a great protein, but it's also not chicken or beef. And not a lot of people, not a lot of companies offer multiple proteins either for dogs with potential allergies. Other than like, chicken and beef. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I like to no, use do that. True. I discovered not even through a vet that sweet little Paco was allergic to chicken. And mm. sure enough, I tested out the theory and whenever, you know, I give him chicken, that's when, you know, the sign of like licking the paws. Yep. So, mm-hmm. you know, my other dog does great on chicken. So I just um, stick to like beef and duck bone broth for them. Yeah. And what, what all proteins do you have at Primal Vore? 
So we have duck, beef, and chicken. Got it. Very so cool. So thing for everyone. Yes. And we're coming out with supplements soon, which I'm excited. It will only aid in what bone broth does for our little babies. Ah, very oh. fun. I love well, that. Well, really trying to play ball with me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> a, a dog mom's duties are never done, you know. Never done. 100% of the time. Never done. <laughs> so you talked a little bit, a uh, little... You talked a little bit ago about how the bone broth would have aided in lining Paco's gut. Can you go into more detail about that? Yes. So what I love about bone broth is two parts. One, the bone broth itself, and two, the benefits that happen from a healed gut. So when you consume bone broth, human being or dog, um, it's the only beverage or food that physically goes into your gut and creates almost like a like a stocking or a lining um, mm. to any little holes caused from bad digestion. And everyone has bad digestion to an extent, some obviously worse than others. So bone broth literally creates a lining for food to seamlessly pass through so that mm. no food seeps out. And that's when red blood cells go to fight these invaders, aka the food, and it makes you sick and inflamed and wow. leads to chronic inflammation, which leads to chronic illness. So bone broth lines the gut and while lining your gut, literally directly pumps natural occurring collagen into the places you need it via your gut. And it's the most um, bioavailable way for your body to receive bone broth in a liquid, hot, directly into your gut. And what happens when you have um, a healed gut or a gut that's being repaired from bone broth is it's exponential for the joints, which is obviously great for dogs. Um, it's great for the hair. Everyone wants our dog's hair nice skin and nails but it's i think most importantly really great for natural immunity um most of our immunity is in our gut and believe it or not stress and anxiety also comes from the gut so all these benefits <laughs> you get bless you from having bone broth it really just aids in overall wellness physically mentally <laughs> actually emotionally as well yep um, so to me, the sky's the limit for bone broth. I, I truly think it's going to be drank like tea and coffee someday soon. Yeah, makes sense. And so when you talk about the holes in the gut, is that kind of what we colloquially, colloquially know as leaky gut? Yes, exactly. Leaky gut. And, you know, some people aren't full tilt leaky gut, but they still will have tiny holes caused from bad, bad digestion. We're working with a dog trainer right now who also specializes in the gut and healing the gut and, you know, comes from the perspective that gut issues can cause a lot of behavioral issues that pet parents are experience. And we're doing like we're kind of starting this whole gut protocol and stuff because we've realized go, looking back, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I think our dogs always had gut issues, you know, yeah. especially Banks licking himself all the time. I mean, right now, I don't know where he is, but he's probably somewhere licking himself. <laughs> yeah. And so what I've learned is like, we feed the highest quality stuff on the market, but that's not always enough. It's not always enough to just switch to the highest quality stuff because that is like good fuel, but it does nothing to repair the damage that's been done from, you know, highly processed food, stress, whatever's the cause of that leaky gut. It's true. So bone broth is such a good additive to your dog's diet. They love it. You could even put it in the food. You could put it out as a treat. Um, but but I think it's huge. Like I had no idea. Like Paco's journey was really eye-opening to me to see how all, all this chronic inflammation led him to that very moment where doctors were trying to have me put him down on the false pretenses of cancer. It was crazy. Yep. And had you not been a, a relatively informed pet parent, you would have taken the advice of your vet, you know, and not totally. tried other stuff. And then to make matters worse, you know, the hospital who was put out separate from the people who said that couldn't even tell me what went wrong. I had to contact the, the company who, whose food he was on. It was like a raw diet. Um, for a while and they actually did their due diligence which like that's how I learned what happened and and what they said actually made a lot of sense and was rational and they had data points from his history yeah yeah that's incredible so does your bone broth differ does the primalvore bone broth differ at all from human bone broth on the market I mean technically we could have it yeah <laughs> so it's human grade the only difference is we're not putting ingredients in it like onions or garlic. 
those um, flavorings kind of exactly that yeah. a lot of human bone broths have so technically we could have it it could be you know a two for one mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool and honestly we haven't really gotten into it but i think a small dream of ours has always been to be able to offer like something you and your dogs can both eat you know like smoothie treats bone broth <laughs> stuff like that so yeah yeah, cheers. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious so can you please walk us through the process of how your bone broth is made? So the key with bone broth, in my humble opinion, <laughs> is um, it's really important how it's sourced because you are what you eat. So you got to be careful with sourcing. Um, we're really good at reputably, reputably sourcing everything. Um, but the whole cook process, low and slow is the name of the game. You never want to cook anything, you know, on high heat or fast because the magic that happens from bone broth is the long cook process. So having that long cook process breaks down the bone, which makes gelatin, which is cooked collagen. So we cook it for at least 24 hours. And like I said, low and slow for all the bones to break down and whatever, you know, vegetables we're using in whichever skew. And um, then after that, it goes into the pouch and then the pouch is a retort pouch. So then the temperature gets brought up slightly on the pouch, once again, low and slow to be made shelf stable without preservatives and back down. And then you have a shelf stable bone broth, which to me has been a huge game changer for my company personally and Primal Vore for a number of reasons. Like it's so easy for the bone broth to go bad during shipping. It's so easy for it to go bad in your fridge. And then the whole fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer, then you just have an unusable product. And I went back and forth on this on my own journey with Beauty and the Broth and went apples to apples on freshness. And if you really, you know, dig through both, it, it's, it's the same exact thing, except one has a way bigger advantage that I think keeps germs away. Yeah, yeah, that totally resonates. So do you use, I know you have a few different recipes. Do you use specific types of bones in each recipe? I'm assuming you probably got to use a large amount of the chicken and the duck because they're kind of smaller animals. Hi there. Hey. <laughs> I didn't know this was a two-person podcast. Guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> So yeah, so, bone the bones in there. Yeah, so we tend to use the bones with the most um, collagen. So for the chicken, it would be the backbone as well as something like a duck. And for the beef, we tend to use the marrow bones, the femur bones. The, the uh, thickest of bones within the animal tends to ex have like the most benefit. Got it, I did not know that. So <clears throat> is the bone broth suitable, suitable for all pets or are there certain pets that should not have it? In my, in my professional dog mom opinion, I think it is suitable for all dogs. Um, you know, looking at any dogs with any sort of ailment, I think it would only be beneficial. Maybe, may or may not the chicken, mm -hmm. depending on if they have that allergy to chicken. Um, but definitely helpful in elderly dogs, definitely hel helpful in puppies, um, and definitely helpful in sickly dogs. So. Yeah, I would say it's healthy for all dogs. Yeah. Do you at all recommend cat parents use your product? Because I've looked at the ingredients and they look fantastic for cats, you know? Yeah. So Primalvore is suited. It, it's for, for all animals, for, nice. for cats and dogs. I just am personally a dog mom. So I I know the ins and outs. Paloma, this Bernadoodle you saw, is my fifth dog as an adult. Like, oh, like wow. on my own. So I've seen it all. But, um, and I actually grew up with two cats, but I was a kid, so I wasn't in charge of the bone broth regimen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, Primavore is, is very much suited for cats and dogs, and I think it would be a huge value add for cats as well, especially because they jump so high. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Absolutely. Especially the senior cats, they start to get the joint issues like you were talking about with dogs. Well, and I feel like dehydration too is oh, yeah. a problem in dogs, but it's especially a problem with cats. Yes, which is a great segue into our next question. What are your favorite ways to incorporate it into pets' diets, or what do you recommend pet parents do with it? So a couple things. One thing we do, which is kind of fun, especially for summer, like I'm in Austin right now and it is a little too hot. <laughs> uh, we make it into bone broth ice cubes, which is nice. kind of fun. Um, dogs and cats go crazy for it. 
Um, another popular way, a lot of people have like this dehydrated dog food now and that's become quite popular. It's amazing to, to put the broth in that food instead of water. Um, or sometimes I'll just pour it on top of their food. You know, my dogs are on a, um, what's it called? A, fro a frozen diet, but it's human grade cooked food that you dethaw. So I pour it on that or I'll just give it to them in a bowl as a treat, like to lick up. Yeah, I I love that. And our we actually gave it to them. Was it yesterday or the day before? We were supposed to have a big storm coming in, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do some bone broth, a little CBD oil, and just give them a little afternoon it. snack. Oh, it was great that's for them. So smart. Yeah, they My loved it. Goes, last night there was thunder and lightning. He had the worst thunder lightning anxiety. That would have been yep. the move. You're teaching me stuff. <laughs> That's ours too. Our protocol is some sort of CBD oil and then turn all the fan, the bathroom fans in the house on. So there's just white noise everywhere, oh, you know? <laughs> yes. I'm yeah. always like, Alexa, play cold, play radio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So how has the response been from pet parents since you took over Primal Vore? Is that correct? I, I did not take it over. I came in as a partner and oh, okay. as the face and as the person running it and running the marketing. Got so it. the response has been great. Um, my business partner, Don is incredible and he's an equally passionate pet enthusiast and he's a veteran in the bone broth business. So I couldn't have a better partner that knows the product, like the back of his hand. Um, and I know, I guess like the benefits and the marketing of it, like the back of my hand. So it's been pretty, pretty awesome. And um, on Amazon, the reviews speak for itself. We have thousands um, of good reviews at this point. And, and Paco and Paloma, I know they can't speak, but they have it all the time and are obsessed with it. So that's a pretty positive review for me, especially since Paco is very picky. Yeah, I'm sure. And so you've been obviously in the human and the pet side of this in either one, but as it pertains to bone broth, what challenges have you faced specifically in your business and kind of expanding your business? How much time you got? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's a lot. <laughs> um, man, it's tough. No matter what industry you're in, if you're an entrepreneur, it, it's tough, but um, it's also very exciting and very rewarding. Some things we face, sorry, pull them up, come here. Um, I would say number one for probably both of them have been like the uh, supply chain the past few years. Um, it's getting more and more expensive because you want the best ingredients, right? We're both smaller companies. It's run by us. We have all the integrity. So we care a lot about the ingredients. So the ingredients have shot up in price um, and, and some are harder to get now. So that's been a pain point, but obviously something that with patience and time and and balancing that you, it's solvable. Um, another thing is, I guess, part of the supply chain is the lead times. So, you know, the lead times, especially when we have like a big order, we need to send pallets to Amazon or what have you, um, is another issue. Yeah, did you guys get hit by the avian flu at all? Did that affect things? Um, I don't believe so. It didn't it. affect in the broth and I feel like I would have heard about it. If yeah, it no, happened. we've we have we've met some partners who were very affected by it and then some were that were really not. So I'm always curious yeah. for people that deal with poultry and chicken specifically, you know. For sure, for yeah. sure. We we probably weren't doing a run of it then, knock on wood. Yeah, um, no kidding. And, and then I guess like on the marketing side, it, it's always tough, right? There's a lot of great brands out there, supplements, what have you. So, you know, explaining the uniqueness of your product and I think the passion speaks for itself when you have something like bone broth that's, you know, it's not a powder. It's not a, you know, I'm like watching my words here, mm -hmm. it, it, <laughs> um, but it, it's not, it's something that's been around since caveman days. Yeah. So I think that that speaks volumes. And I think that if someone is on bone broth, whether you're a human or dog, and you start to see results after two weeks, it's really, really exciting. So we have that on our side for marketing. But the thing is getting out to people and getting them to try and getting them to see for themselves and, you know, putting our our product where our mouth is. Yeah, totally. And just convincing pet owners to alter their food in any way. You know, I think a lot of the big kibble companies have kind of 
put out so much propaganda saying like, this is all you need. You don't need to do anything else. When in reality, there are some things out there that can be so beneficial. Well, and there are also products out there that you get and they don't do anything. Yeah, yeah, So exactly. it's like, is this really going to be, it, that's what for me, like when things are pretty simple, like it's something simple, like simple yet effective, of course, like bone broth, you're like, can it really do that though? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, holy crap, it does. Yeah, well, and Melissa, I think we talked about this last time. And you might be muted, by the way. It sounds like I, you're okay. I, I, I muted when Paloma's playing with the ball. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No worries at all. <laughs> yeah. um, we were talking about last time when we had kind of a, our first chat how you make a product and then you sell it. And then you get people coming back to you that are like, oh my God, it worked. And you're like, okay, I believe in my product, but I'm still kind of weirded out that I made something that benefited an actual pet. You know what I mean? Totally. It's really creepy. Well, it's creepy two parts for me. One, before I even had the company, when I tried bone broth, this was like way before I was like on this health journey and cared about health. I, I couldn't believe, I'm like, how did a drink do this? Like, I'm very candid when I said, you know, when I was acting, I was getting Botox and the timer would go away. I was like, ah, the doctor now. And having bone broth, that went away. The damage, I had, it's called Oscar Slaughter's disease in my right knee from field hockey. I no longer needed a brace when I skied. Wow. And then all of a sudden my digestive issues, I was regular again. So I was like, how on earth is a drink doing this? Like, that's crazy. And then digging into it and really learning the ins and outs, starting my own company. And then having, you know, the converse, people reach out to you. Like I've had acne all my life and I've tried everything, nothing worked. Or, you know, I had this, you know, IBS or chronic digestive issues and yada, 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 or, or thank you. We, we've always needed a product like this. It's kind of like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know? To I totally resonate. Oh my God, what are you drinking? It's yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So what plans do you have for the future of the bone broth line? I know you mentioned some supplements, but you want to go yes. into that a little more or anything else? So the supplements, something that's really exciting for us, we're going to, I think, launch with three. We're going to be doing a total of five. Nice. Um, I know Don is very excited about it and for good reason um, because it, it's the perfect addition to a bone broth, right? To get Our pets deserve to live a nice, long, healthy life. So anything mm -hmm. that gives them the leg up, and I think, I, I think wow. that the pet industry has never been as revolutionized as it is now. I think people care about their dogs so much, yes. but the technology and stuff coming out for them is huge. And I think using ancient remedies like bone broth and then combined with a supplement, um, you know, we're going to have different ones. Um, Don could speak more high level of it, but you know, definitely for the exterior of the dog and obviously the interior, all the different ailments and what have you, so we're hoping to launch those end of summer or at least have, you know, our first kind of limited release batch out. Um, and then as for the future of dog bone broth, um, you know, we he hope to have the, the supplements be massively successful, keep those up, find easier ways to incorporate bone broth into the dog's life and get every dog on bone broth and cat. <laughs> A cat. I don't mean to disinclude cats. Yeah. I'm just, you know, a dog mom. But yes. I should get a cat so that I can now, you know, talk about both when I talk about the dog and cat bone broth industry. Yeah. That's Bryce. I was going to say, like, that's us too. He's like, we need a cat so that I can, like, get more into it and learn more about it yeah. and make more content about it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, yeah, and our property management company won't let us get a fourth pet, so that's also <laughs> inhibiting us. Mind, you know, let, guys, let's get a cat. Yes. You, get, you guys get it two weeks, I get it two weeks. Yes, it's a shared custody. <laughs> I love it, and we'll just, we'll just make a bunch of content. That's so funny. <laughs> so to get into some of the personal questions, how do you balance a business that, like, or how do you balance – two businesses, one that's human and one that's pets, because while they are similar, one is selling to the same species that you are. And I mean, I, I guess the other is still, still selling to humans, but it's, it's more for pets. So like, how do you balance that? Um, it presents, a t it's easy and hard at the same time. I would say the parts that are easy about it, what I do, like everything I do marketing for beauty and the broth, I'm just like, okay, I'll do it again for primal bore. Um, and what's really nice about Primavore is having partners, like, and the best partners. So it's really nice. Like I'm beauty in the broth. I'm handling, like, obviously, like I have, um, you know, like teams that make it and co-pack it, but I'm the one 
organizing all those logistics and what have you. So it's so nice with Primal Vor that I'm handling the marketing side of things and, and things, you know, and, and high level of like the packaging and what have you. So it makes it so much easier having like that bounce back. That's something I've always craved with Beauty and the Broth. Um, and of course, sometimes it gets like crazy and you're like, ah, sometimes I just want to like just turn off my laptop and go in the bath, which I do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, now, now that I've kind of got more of the swing of things, it, it's it's nice being able to put in, like, the efforts for Beauty in the Broth and, and duplicating it for Primal Vor. Um, so it's same, same, different. It's nice having that team to bounce back with. It inspires me on my own in Beauty in the Broth since it is just me. And that could be um, – that could be – really taxing to not have like a co-founder or a business partner doing a company on your own. It's always been my personal biggest pain point. Yeah, I bet. So now my question is, are you trying to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like alter your setup with beauty and the broth to be a little more similar to primal vor? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am trying to do that. I think, um, eventually at the right time, it would be great to run both companies the same. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a big goal of mine. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping something like that happens toward Q4 of this year. Oh, very cool. So it's it's sooner than than I thought it would be too. I thought that'd be a long process. So that's very cool. Um, so speaking about you know a little bit of your past, even before Primal Vor or Beauty and the Broth, can you speak to any failure that and, and you know we say failure with quotations because like failure is not what a lot of people think it is. Can you talk about any failure in your life that you felt like was kind of vital to go through to get to this point? Absolutely. I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> um, when I first started Beauty and the Broth and I was, you know, Googling how to start a company, this, that, the other. And at first I was thinking small. I was thinking, I'm just going to have a bone broth shop in LA because that's where I got the idea from. I saw a need in the market in Los Angeles. And so I start. I went to meetachef.com. I found this amazing chef named Alini. We developed recipes together. And um, then I found like this offsite commissary kitchen, super small. And I'm like, cool. We could do produce bone broth out of here. And then they have like the whole like Uber Eats model and Postmates. So while producing it, um, you know, you could fulfill orders and we could sell the bone broth at a storefront. So that was like my big idea. And then I started getting all like these headaches with the kitchen and, and the prices of like workers comp and insurances and everything and the rent in this tiny kitchen. Then I started interviewing cooks and I already started getting nightmares with that. I literally brought all the kitchen equipment, had the lease signed, sticker on the door, ready to open it for business. And like, that's when my, my boyfriend at the time, like sat me down and I could thank him a lot for this. And he was like, Melissa, you got to pull the plug. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you got to pull the plug. He goes, every day you're at that kitchen is a day you're taking away from selling your product. He's like, look, you're already dealing with all these headaches. You didn't have like, you know, I, I get excited about things. I, I should have, you know, been a little bit more patient, ran through every last number before signing the lease. So I kind of, you know, got excited and just want to get off the ground, which is good advice for an entrepreneur, just get off the ground, but, you know, be a little bit more methodical. So I went in and I was like, guys, I, I need to talk to you about something. Like I've made a mistake here. Like I can't be doing this. And also it's like a, a ton of liability as well. And I realized I needed a co-packer and they were really hard to find for bone broth. So I lost my $5,000 deposit, uh, which really, really hurt. Like I initially like self-funded and I allotted like a certain amount of money. It really, really hurt. And I got to admit, it took me like two months to get back on the horse. Like I was like, <gasps> like my ego was bruised. Everyone kept asking me about the kitchen when it's opening. And I had to like put my tail between my legs. And I was like, yeah, I had a full book. Um, but I'm so thankful for that moment because it led me to my amazing co-manufacturers that took me a while to find after that. And then the, the next pivotal moment was I visited, I visited my co-manufacturers in January, right before COVID broke out. Um, as you know, it kind of broke out February, March. And 
initially I was, you know, as I mentioned earlier, going to go like shelf stable or, or fresh or frozen and running the prices of frozen too were crazy, you know, shipping two day shipping with dry ice and the inserts and, and I went back and forth, back and forth, because if I'm going to like quit my former career and this needs to be the best broth. So then I was like, okay, I think in the shelf stable route. And I just remember being at my co-manufacturers and seeing it on the table. They had like my little cute rice husk cups there that come in our first subscription order. And they had like the tasting for, for it. And thank God I got to see them before COVID because at the corner of the table, I saw what looked like a hockey puck and I was like fixated. I'm like, what's that? What's that? They're like, oh, don't worry about that. Like your products in these cups. I'm like, yeah, but what is that? They're like, oh, nothing. That's just in concentrated form. It we concentrated form. We um steam it multiple times so that we get the water out. That way, it's easier to easier to ship to the co-packer than they reconstitute it with water. And I was like, why are they doing that? Like, why isn't the customer doing that? Because that's arguably more convenient and customizable. So it was that moment right before COVID that changed our whole business model to make something super unique that no one else was doing that I think is very disruptive to the industry. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. And and I really love that like you see you can now see that moment as a moment in a moment in time that had to happen, you know. We oh. also we we lost our not that you lost your business, but like kind of, you know, you lost it and restarted it and that's very much what happened to us and like you said, just those first couple months after, you you have to tell people your ego's bruised. You're just like, am I you, a failure? Yeah. Like, what am I gonna <laughs> do? Yep. You can get into a pretty dark headspace. Totally. I definitely s sat on the sidelines for two months after that. I was like, it hurt. It yeah. hurt. And I was just like, get back on. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. Well, Bryce has a saying he always says, and at first I thought it was so annoying. And now I think it's even more annoying because it's true. <laughs> it's it's not the smartest person in the room that succeeds. It's the person that doesn't give up. Yep. And I'm like, Because yeah, that's the thing. You could have easily been done. But now that you didn't give up and you kept persevering, you have one of the best bone broths on the market for both pets and humans. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, Thanks. yeah, very, very cool. So, okay, you've mentioned Paco and Paloma. Don't you have three dogs? I did. Oh. Little Poppy passed away November 22nd. So yeah, that, that hurt. She was, she, I love all my dogs, but she was the one. Like, we had, like, we have a soul connection. And I swear, like, I know it sounds crazy, don't care. She's, like, my tiny little soulmate. She oh, so I believe it. I believe it. So, what breeds are Paco and Paloma? Paloma's a Bernadoodle and she's a puppy and I like to think that Poppy sent her for me because mm -hmm. I did not I mean I had a deposit on a Bernadoodle for six years but I wasn't gonna get it till I was like in a very stable home life once knock on wood that eventually my babies passed on I just want to be top of the list right mm -hmm. and uh, my ex kept being like come on come on let's get the Bernadoodle and I was like absolutely not I'm gonna be the one taking care of three dogs and <laughs> And, um, you know, I got her probably about six months or eight months before Poppy died. Uh -huh. And so it, it really helped with the blow. And I didn't even want a female. So I'm like, I don't want to upset Poppy. But then she was like the perfect one. Um, so it softened the blow. And I feel like she was so meant to be. Then I have sweet little Paco, who's a Morky Maltese Yorkshire Terrier. Oh. And um, he's my little ride or die. I, I love to tell people this. So he was with me when I did study abroad in Paris in college. Wow. He is your ride or die. Yeah. Isn't wow. that crazy? That yes. is crazy. So then what does your daily routine look like with these guys? Um, so we all cuddle in bed, which is amazing. And then we wake up. I like to take them on a walk before I feed them. Um, so I take them on a walk around the block. Um, then I feed them. Then I just nonstop play ball with Paloma <laughs> all day while I work. Please send help. Um, and, you know, I try to incorporate them on travel when I can. But it, it's, it's, I've never had a bigger dog like Paloma before. It's kind of nice because I'm such a sucker. Like Poppy was so small and Paco was only 10 pounds. So I would just drag them around everywhere with me on my travels. So having a bigger dog is more grounding. So I'm like, I'm going to leave her behind, Melissa. Live your life. Yeah. Go do what you want to do. <laughs> leave Paco with her. 
So it's definitely like more grounding to I have bet. this bigger little burn of poop. Yeah. <laughs> That's so amazing. I get what you mean though about like we will put the dogs like we'll leave them home to go paddle boarding and we're like we're not bad, right? We're like and the dogs are okay, right? And then we're like no. No, we deserve like it's okay. Yeah. They're all right. It's going to be fine. So Which is also why we haven't had kids yet because you can't put kids in cages and leave for the day or for a couple hours. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Yes. So what are you consuming right now? Books, podcasts, shows? Um, what am I consuming right now? I, I've been reading um Joe Dispenza's work. Um, mm. so I'll listen to that on Audible or read it, depending on if I'm in bed or the sauna or on a walk. Mm -hmm. Um And who is Joe Dispenza for our audience that might not know? So Joe Dispenza, he's a former chiropractor and he is not a chiropractor anymore. He's like one of those, like, he's kind of like Tony Robbins-esque, which is, he's like a kind of like motivational, um, helps you like clear your trauma. He's very big on like neuro pathways and, and putting science behind it. So basically like the concept, like whatever you want, you could get like whatever the, your wildest things you could quote unquote manifest. However, what I like about him, I'm someone that that I, I need logic and reason to believe stuff. He backs it up with science. Wow. All the science of the brain and everything. So, and how to change your thoughts and, and rewire your brain and your thoughts to get whatever it is, oh, Paloma, to get whatever <laughs> it is you want. Yeah, I love that. Um, and so then last thing, Melissa, I'm assuming a lot of our audience listening to this is going to be infatuated with bone broth now, and they're going to want to find you and connect with you. So where can they do that website, social media, anything like that? Where can people find you? So they can find me at, at Melissa Bologna, Bologna, no G. They could find Primal Vore at, at Primal Vore, P-R-I-M-A-L. V O R E and we're on Amazon right now. And then they can find Beauty in the Broth at at the Beauty in the Broth. And the <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty in the broth.com it just makes me feel so good to see other people especially business owners that just have crazy pets that they have to deal with all day too like love them to death but it makes me feel like i'm not alone so much better <laughs> i'm like oh my well, gosh same, same different yeah. yes because like we have nutrition on lock like, yeah we've got that down but our dogs are not trained training is about a zero if yeah, nutrition is about a so... hundred you know Yes. Absolutely. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. And, you know, we, we talk to a lot of business owners, and it's not very often that a business owner is willing to come in and be as transparent and upfront with their product as you have been. So, and it's like genuinely excited. Yeah, like just passionate about this. So, we really appreciate you being on today, and we'll definitely have to do this again. Yes, this was great. Thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun. And I love my fellow dog and cat people. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And for those of you watching, thanks so much for joining us today. We greatly appreciate you spending part of your day with us. As always, I'm Bryce. I'm Kenzie. We created the BK Pets to help you enrich and extend the lives of your dogs and cats. And we'll see you in the next episode.